Well, namaste to everyone. Ronald is over here this evening. And I just thought it's time to speak to the evangelicals. <clears throat> Those that are the great Christians that all they have to say always is, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Well, I think they've forgotten a whole lot of the Bible. <laughs> and I think it's time to just take a look and see what it has to say. Okay. So let's look and it says in Psalm 1, 1, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. Now, I don't know of anyone that fits that bill, that walks in the way of the sinners, who's giving the counsel of the wicked, and who are more scoffers than Trump supporters. They're against everything. But let's keep going. We've just begun here, okay? Let's look at Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and active, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. So I don't care if Trump wants to say it's only locker room talk. Okay? These are the thoughts and the intentions of his heart. So let's look a little further. Should we keep going down this path? I know it's not one you're going to like too well. But let's look at Revelation 21.8. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers and the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, where are they going? Their portion is in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Okay, <clears throat> are you catching that? The sexually immoral, the liars, where are they headed? The second death. Okay. Let's continue and look and see a little more what the Bible has to say on this subject. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder... For even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it's no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. And their end will correspond to their deeds. Okay? So if you think that Trump, and he's over there talking, I will take the slings and arrows for you as if he is Christ, I will suffer all this for you. Notice how he says it, just like as if he were Christ speaking. I'm telling you, this man is a false apostle, a deceitful workman, deceitful workman, and you can see it in all of his business transaction. He has been deceitful. Any type of a... a contract he's made with people he has not honored it he has not stood up for it he has been deceitful in all of his workings should we continue a little further okay this is a little admonition for all of you evangelicals these good christians that are turning a blind eye as to what's going on and making excuses for him James 4, 17, so whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is a sin. And you know in your heart what's the right thing. 
So I don't care. You can try to find all the loopholes you want. But when you know in your heart and you go against it, that's sin. Okay? You're doing it knowingly. And there's no forgiveness for that. Okay? Let's keep going on. John 2, 15. And what did Christ do with the money changers in the temple? Did he make excuses for them? No, making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen, and he poured out the coins, the money changers, and overturned their tables. He had, they have taken a house of worship and turned it into a home of thieves. And if you think that Trump's doing anything less than that, think again. Think again. So if you think Christ would be happy with this, but, oh, there's forgiveness, and it's okay, because he's saying the right words. Oh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Christ would be in there and would be throwing him out and beating the hell out of him on the way out. Let's continue forward. Mark 7, 20 through 23. And he said what comes out of a person is what defiles him. What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness, all of these evil things come from within and they defile a person. Now, you can't stand there and tell me that all of those things do not point immediately to Trump. Okay? Every single one of those define Trump. Evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft. He's stolen money from these people he's worked with. Murder, adultery. He's cheated. He said he's cheated on, on Melania. He cheated on his first wife, okay? Coveting. He wants what somebody else has all the time. Wickedness, deceit, sensuality. Hey, envy, slander. He's trying to slander these women. Pride. Oh, there's nobody more prideful than Trump. I can't lose. I can't lose. It's not an option. And foolishness. Uh, he's about the most foolish person I've ever seen in my life. So let's continue on and see what else it has to say. Besides, don't cast the first stone. He who is without sin. Oh, you, you really conveniently lost a whole lot of the Bible. <clears throat> So let's keep going. Okay, Matthew 5, 28. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust and intent, it has already committed adultery with her in her heart. If you just look at a woman, just look at her with lustful intent, you have already done the deed. So you think that this is just locker room talk? Oh, he's actually done the deed. And he commits it, commits it in his heart daily. So again, hey, I'm not saying this. This is the Bible that says it. Everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Okay. Let's continue forward. Proverbs 16.5. Everyone who's arrogant in his heart, is an abomination to the Lord. Be assured he will not go unpunished. Now, I haven't seen a more arrogant man than Trump. Arrogance defines him. Every building he has has Trump on it. Look at his home. All nothing but gold and marble. Everything's 24 karat gold. He is an arrogant man. 
So what does it say? He will not go unpunished. Let's continue forward. Leviticus 19.29. Do not, do not profane your daughter by making her a prostitute. Lest the land fall into prostitution and the land become full of a depravity. Oh, he said, but I'm not making my daughter a prostitute. No, what did he say? What did he say on that show? With, with what's his name? Uh, Howard Stern. With, on Howard Stern show. Oh, you mind if I call your daughter a piece of ass? No, I don't mind at all. Yeah, she's a great piece of ass. Look at her. Hey, if she weren't my daughter, I'd be having sex with her. Now, if I don't know, if that's not trying to call your daughter as a, a, as a prostitute, I don't know what, what is. He's lusted after his daughter in his heart, so he's already committed sex with her. You better be watching and paying attention to what this man is saying and doing. I don't know how you can call yourself a good Christian and continue to stand by with him. Okay, <clears throat> continuing forward, Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. There are six things the Lord hates. Seven that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, and a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who sows discord among brothers. Now, I don't know of anybody that's more divisive than Trump is. I think you can say he sows discord among brothers. He wants to cause a revolution here. No holes barred. He wants to be a dictator. Okay? He lies, whatever's convenient for him at the moment. And these are an abomination to God. Let's continue forward. Exodus 23.1. You shall not spread a false report. You shall not join hands with a wicked man to be a malicious witness. Okay? He's lying against these women. These women are coming forward to testify as to what he has done to them. And when you're back there and you're upholding him and you're joining hands with him, you're a malicious witness. Okay, false report, malicious witness. How happy do you think God is with that? Okay, you say, well, why didn't these women come forward before? Obviously, you've never been in that type of a position. And the women are coming forward now, I can tell you, because they hear these lies that he is saying. It's just locker room talk. It never happened. And they are incensed. They know he's a liar. So they are coming forward to say, I finally, I can't be silent anymore. I have to tell the truth of it, and I'm standing up, no matter what it costs me. These women don't want to have their faces plastered everywhere. It's not so they'll become famous. All this time they wanted to be in the background. It's not something you want to bring up. It's not something you want to have to admit to. But when you have somebody running for president of the United States and they know how evil he is, how reprobate he is, they have to say, I'm standing up for the truth and that's it. Okay? So let's continue to go. John 8, 4, 4, you are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, has nothing to do with the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he's a liar and the father of lies, and that's Trump. That's Trump. He doesn't know how to tell the truth. 
Every word that comes out of this man's mouth is a lie. So is that who you want to be in bed with? The father of lies? Satan? Really? And you call yourself Christian? Let's look, keep going. Mark 10, 19. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Oh, honor your father and mother. Okay? None of those. None of those can be attributed to Trump. He's broken all of them. Okay? So let's finish up with Revelation 21, 8. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for the murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. You want to keep playing with Trump? You think it's hot here in Florida? You ain't seen nothing yet. Okay? So you think that he is going to... He's going to uphold Christian values. This man knows nothing about Christian values. Okay? And you want to play politics? You best better be deciding which is more important, your politics or your faith. And I don't care how much you want to say, but I'm forgiven in the blood of Christ. Not when you turn your back on it and you start doing and sinning and doing evil because God judges the hearts and the minds. He judges the hearts and the minds. Okay? Okay. When you know you're doing wrong, you know you're doing wrong. And I don't care how much you want to try to justify it, there is no justification for that. There is no justification for that. Okay? Absolutely none. So he who is out sin cast the first stone. You had best be listening to these women that are stepping forward, that are giving their testimony, that are willing to stand up for truth, that are trying to save you from yourselves. Okay? Because Trump is the closest to the satanic 999 across the forehead and the 666, seeing the 666 under there that I've ever seen. Okay? Absolutely. You best be remembering the rest of the Bible, not just that one convenient line that you like to use so often. Yes, those that come in and repent, not give this thing uh, the most fake apology I've ever seen. That's not repenting. It's not repenting at all. He hasn't repented. He hasn't apologized for the birther thing. He hasn't apologized to any of these women. He continues in the same thing, continues to lie, and continues to act like he's the wounded party. You say, oh, but nobody saw it. Nobody sees a pedophile either. And people are really surprised when they come out. But, oh, he was such a wonderful teacher. 
Oh, but he was just such a wonderful person. You think they go out and do it in public? They don't. They hide it. They hide it. Their deeds are done in the dark, okay? Because that's what they are. They're dark. Okay? Those that are in a position of power will abuse it. They will abuse it. And of course, the women don't want to come out. At that point in time, why? Who's going to believe them? Do you believe them now? Oh, it's so convenient to say, but nobody saw it. Really? And if somebody had raped your child and you didn't see it, would you still say, I didn't see it, it must not have happened. But if your child came and told you, would you believe him? Or would you put him through the ring or two and say, nah, he's a child, what can, what can he know? He didn't, you know, no, I don't believe the adult. Okay? If it was your sister or mother it happened to, would you believe them? Or would you be like Trump? Yeah, sure, you can call her a piece of ass, doesn't matter. For those of you that say you are these great Christians, and you have this Christian heart, and you run around wearing a cross. Now it's time to have a little bit of that crucifixion in yourself and stand up. Quit making excuses. You know in your heart. And when you know in your heart, you continue to go against it, for you it's sin, okay? 100% it's sin, okay? So quit justifying it. Quit turning a blind eye, because that, that's not gonna fly. God sees the hearts, the minds, he knows. He knows. Hey, you're not going to get away with anything. Really willing to sell yourself down the river for that? Is Trump worth it? Mm -hmm. Is that political seat in the Senate or House worth it? Is it really? You might want to think about it. Okay. We'll, we'll leave this here. Selah. You know the Bible? Selah. Think on this. Sit with that. Contemplate that. Okay? And I will leave that here. Good night.